we've got the best tunes on Dispatch, iAcademy's first and only music-centric podcast. Original renditions of your favorite songs, reviews, and then some. All under one roof. You're tuned in to the Music Lowdown with Xavier and Boaz, powered by iAcademy. We're taking up center stage again and rolling out the red carpet for the third episode of Music Lowdown. You got yours truly, Rookie Boaz, on the mic of 99.5 Play FM. And what is up, guys? It's your boy, Savior, back at it again with another podcast episode with my homie, Boaz. And guys, this is our first episode for September, and it is awesome that we are rolling out more episodes for you guys to enjoy from the comfort of your homes. Yeah, for sure. We got the best tunes on Dispatch. And Xavier, I have an inquiry for you, actually. Something came in via the Music Lowdown Gmail account. Something right. which comes courtesy of Bam Adebayo29, clearly an NBA fan, an NBA <laughs> head. And he asks us this question, a very succinct question. Matched grip or traditional? What does that mean? <laughs> He's asking you. I, I'm not a drummer. I'm not a drummer, right? So I'm not really knowledgeable when it comes to the vernacular and the parlance and the jargon. So help me out here. What does he mean by that? Uh, okay. I'm a match grip. I'm a match grip. Um, match grip or traditional grip. Essentially, uh, those are the two like main grip types for drummers when holding a uh, drumstick. Okay. Match uh, match grip is essentially um, you would hold the drumstick when you first hold it. You hold it. Um, you hold it straight through your hands like that. Traditional grip is kind of like how you see the marching drummers, the line drummers, like how they have their uh, one hand at an angle with the stick. Kind of like you're holding it like a pen or something. Whoever asked that, yeah, if you're a drummer, shout out to you, gang gang. <laughs> All right, so once more, if you are so inclined, you can reach us via musiclowdown123 at gmail.com. For the uninclined, of course, we'd be happy to answer your queries and we'll do them as best as we can. Of course, we've set up shop via Gmail to get a banter and a discourse and some commentary going on between us. And we'd love to hear from you guys more. Sweet. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, um, how you doing, bro? It's our third episode. How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling like, honestly, I'm feeling like doing something inventive for Literacy right. Month. Oh, yes. Because it is Literacy yes. Month. Something on brand and something that would be apt would be, I don't know, say to make and devise a song completely from scratch derived from ABC. Ooh, something special. Ooh. Yeah, something Fancy. special <laughs> for the listeners, yeah. for the audience. Something special, something completely fresh and you let's freshen things up with our own take on the ABC song. Yeah, this is original, made by us for you guys for Literacy Month. And of course, it's gonna be our first performance. Y'all good for it, bro? Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, guys, we'll be back in three, two, one. A, B, C, T, O, E, F, G. Sweet, sad. 
serendipity been running out of words to say you're my girl loving you is as easy as one two three or d guy yeah no man but a baby see how can i make you mine Running out of syllables and letters to say your mind, I A E O U. I think I love you. I E O E U, girl. I think I just fell in love with you. What is up guys how did you like that performance we did our own take of the abc the alphabet the basic thing that you learned Woo! how do you how do you feel about that bro I felt great about it what better way to be illiterate than where it all started yeah, right with the abc song one of the very first things we learned uh from from childhood and we've i think what we've done is we've packaged it And we've unraveled it to the people in a very Promethean and in a, in a very untrodden way. You know, it, it hasn't been trodden. It's a new, it's a completely new take on it, completely new spin. And that's the kind of thing we do here at Music Lowdown. I'm so happy about. That. Yeah, and of course, um, we sauced it up, right? That's the thing. We sauced it up. Yeah, man. we sauced yeah, it I up. I love that. Yeah, loving your terminologies, man. <laughs> you're keeping me literate and abreast of all the street terms, man. That's why. That's why I love you, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. We we bo- uh, you did a good job in saucing it up, man. I just did the extra. I added the extra sauce on top. All right, um, bro. Why don't you take us to the uh, our first special segment for this episode? Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we take the listeners through the very first segment of the show, and we're doing. A little we're doing something a little different we're going off the beaten track a little bit with this new segment we're gonna do movie soundtracks right we're gonna give them the 411 and the lowdown on some of the movie soundtracks that may have flown under the radar or have been under their nose this whole time some of our favorites right we've curated a list of some of our favorite movie soundtracks Yeah, and on top of that, these aren't just regular movies that we're going to be doing. Um, since it's Literacy Month, we're going with the theme. These are going to be movies or series that are adaptations of books, comics, etc., etc., etc. Right on, man. Right on. Yeah. All right, bro. You start first. You started off. What do you got on your list, bro? With great pleasure, this first song comes to us in the form of Sound Gardens. Sound Gardens song. Live to rise off of the Avengers soundtrack. Gotta love this song because, well, although I I didn't corroborate this from the source uh, themselves, but or the internet for that matter, I've only did I've only done some superficial reading uh, behind it. But I kind of feel like this song, especially the first verse, speaks a lot to the Avengers and what was going on in the movie thematically. And I say that because of this. Let me read to you the first few lines of the song right what if all you understand it couldn't could fit into the center of your hand then you found it wasn't you who held the sum of everything you knew i kind of feel like that harkens back a lot of what the tesseract is which is the focal point of the movie right the tesseract and i kind of feel like it speaks to that because in many ways the tesseract in my interpretation at least is the physical manifestation of that And it could be attributed and equated to that, to knowledge and what Soundgarden is alluding to in the song, which is great, very on brand, very thematically consistent, and I love it when songs do that. Uh, I mean, for me, I've only listened to the song once, and that's a long time ago, man. <laughs> I, I yeah. can't really yeah, recall. I, they, I can't really recall it, but I, I mean, they played it towards the end. They played it as the end credit song, I believe. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty mean, sure that, it is. I mean, that first Avengers sure. movie is like, it's like how many years ago already, bro? It was pretty monumental too. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I think like the like the first like super 
big blockbuster like superhero team up, right? Like no one had what, done yeah. something that big before. It was one for the books for sure. And they had a very allegorical song to boot, which comes to us in the form of this song from Soundgarden, which I loved. How, how about you go ahead with yours, man? Ooh, mine. Um, all right. So, uh, mine is gonna be a comic. It's a adaptation of a comic series. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the Umbrella Academy. Umbrella yeah, Academy. Brother. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it just turned, it just dropped its second season at the end of July on Netflix and knocked it out of the park once again. Uh, for those uh, for the uninitiated, you know, uh, Umbrella Academy is a comic series created by My Chemical Romance's frontman Jared Way, and it was illustrated by Gabriel Ba. And the story essentially follows a group of seven superpowered individuals who are adopted by Sir Reginald Hargreaves into the institute called the Umbrella Academy as a crime fighting group. So yeah, uh, Netflix adapted it into a series since uh, last year, 2019 or 2018. And it's been a big hit, big sensation, one of Netflix's best adaptations out there, if I say so myself. Yeah, it's a great balance, a great blend of comedy, action, sci-fi, and it's accompanied by a great and strong, robust, soundtrack with newer songs and all-time classics have you seen the second season i'm halfway through Ooh. i don't want to do a full sweep because i simply don't have the time but uh if my if my schedule would uh would allow for that i would have done a full sweep of it but um i'm taking it gradually what episode are you on if i ask i'm literally at the midpoint at the halfway oh okay Episode um, number five, right? Five of ten. Yeah, there yeah. are ten episodes this season. Yep. Hey, five, five, five. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, five. man. Come on. I wasn't referencing Aiden Gallagher's character at all. If you'll who's, your, who's your fave person or fave character there in the whole group, bro? Number one's grappling with a lot of things. I... Literally and figuratively, which I love. I love that. I love the inner, the inner dialogue he has and the inner issues. That he has, I think that makes him human. That makes him relatable for sure, because he's wrestling and grappling with a lot, just like a lot of us. Yeah, he's had a very decorated and a very colorful past with Vanya, you know. Mm, and yeah. suffice it suffice it to say, season two doesn't make it any easier for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, me, uh, I I I like both Five and Klaus. Yeah. Ooh, good yeah. picks. Good five, picks. five, cause like you know, it's funny, cause like he's in the child, he's in a chill, child's body, but like he's the most adult person in the whole. I know yeah. he's so precocious. At least, uh, at least a lot, a heck of a lot more precocious over how he looks. You know? Yeah, and Klaus, um, I like Klaus, cause like his whole his whole character is just uh, like the, he's the chill guy in the whole group, you know. He certainly injects a lot of frivolity when it comes to the show. He does the heavy lifting in that aspect. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, back to soundtracks. Um, Umbrella Academy's soundtrack is um, really great. It's very strong. You know, they have a good mix of old school and new school stuff. Um, for this second season, if I can recall, they have a, a, they have covers of songs as well. I recall they did "Bad Guy" by Billie Eilish. It's a, they did a cover of a song. They made like 1960s style to fit the era, and then they also did um, "Crazy" by Norris Barkley. Are you familiar with that song? Mm, yeah, Norris Barkley. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, gnarly. yeah, yeah. And then I'm not gonna spoil much, but I'm just gonna say that they played. Backstreet Boys in the second season, they played Everybody by Backstreet Boys. And when it came out, they executed oh. how that song came out very well in the show. Like, they, they nailed it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> it was unexpected. I'm not quite there yet. I'm not quite there yet, man. Yeah, so yeah bro. It. I'll tell you, it's really <laughs> unexpected how they did that. Like, when, when, they, when they, like, cued it in, I was like, oh, I just jumped out of my seat, bro. Like, man, th that was a special moment right there. Um, what else? I guess another one from Umbrella would be, well, what I would say is like the, a classic of the series. This is from season one. It's uh, I think we're alone now by Tiffany. That's the song that they dance to in the mm. first season inside their house. Yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a good one. It set the mood and tone for the whole 
first season and I guess for the whole season, uh, the whole series as well. There were some original compositions by Gerard Way as well that are found in the series as well. So yeah, on top of writing the whole series on the comics, he's also helping out in the soundtrack department of the whole series, which is also really cool. Can I just say, they would be doing themselves a great disservice if they didn't ch- tap Gerald Way to do at least one song, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope they would play more My Chemical Romance songs in the series. Like, like I, I'd say like at least one per season. Something like at that. least one per season. Yeah, because yeah. I mean Gerard Way, man. You gotta inject yeah. at least one song into each season. All you guys listening uh, listening to this podcast, check out Umbrella Academy. It's a must watch. One of Netflix's best. And also for you, bro, you gotta get through the season, bro. You're missing out on a lot. Yeah, I have to. I have right, a lot bro. of catching up to do. Yeah, bro. What's right. uh, what's your next? All right, shifting gears now to my neck of the woods. My next pick comes from the tearjerker, Me Before You. Ooh. Uh, and the song I chose particularly is no contrary to popular belief i'm not gonna pick the 1975's the sound although it is there <laughs> and it is tempting as a big big the 1975 fan i'm not gonna do it because it doesn't really do a lot to push forth the narrative of the movie right it's only ever there for like the song it only ever breezes through for like a good 30 seconds and it's in the periphery it's in the back on the back burner in the background of things and it isn't really the, the focal point, right? But this song, it comes to us in the form of Not Today. And when it came on in the scene, oof, it dismantled my heart with reckless abandon. It really did. Any semblance of male vibrato was gone, man. I was crying. I was crying, man. Which really proves to show and which speaks volumes to the fact that music is, is so compelling and it's so gripping. It can just grab you by the collar like that in the right moment. And the marriage and the confluence of music and the motion picture, the art of motion pictures, it can just compel someone to, to feel that way. And it's beautiful. And I was straight up crying. One of the better cries I've had. You ever just have a good cry? That was one of those, that was one of those moments for me. I had such a good cry to that scene. It was the last scene when Amelia Clark's character was reading uh, Sam Claflin's character's letter to her. I don't want to disclose too much for those who haven't watched it. But um, yeah, you have to see it for yourself. Words cannot adequately express how I felt in that moment. It's something spiritual, nothing short of a spiritual experience. You're gonna have to see and hear it for yourselves. The song's called Not Today. It's better suited, I guess, in the framework and in the context of the movie. So you're gonna have to experience it that way. Man, I mean, there's, yeah, there are some movies that do that. They just like hit you right there. Feels, man. It was a stake to the heart. It was a stake <laughs> to the heart. You know? Oh, man. Uh, Go on. Sorry. I cut you short. Go uh, on. It's, it's good. Uh, I mean, yeah, I watched the movie. Well, I didn't cry, but uh, uh, my mom did and other people did that I was yeah. watching it with. And then, like, out of nowhere, I was just like, all right, it's awkward. I'm the only dude here not crying, so I'm going to just join in. And I just, did it. And I just, fake, I just fake cried with them. So I was like, ooh, they're in the background. So, yeah. If you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. Right? If you can't beat them, join them. Might as well. Yeah. Look, I made, I made a promise to myself that I would never cry to a chick flake. That didn't go so well for me. Oh, man. <laughs> you want to go ahead and do your next pick? I I I uh so yeah my next pick would be another Netflix series Warrior Nun. It just came out in July as well. Warrior Nun is an adaptation of Ben Dunn's Warrior Nun Ariala. So the series follows on or- the Order of the Cruciform Sword, and it's essentially an order of warrior nuns in service of the Catholic Church, and they keep the peace, maintain order, and they fight off demons and other supernatural uh, threats. And this, I would say, another must-watch. It's uh, a fun series to watch. It's it it has a good balance of comedy, action, supernatural vibes. And yeah, um, soundtrack on that one, not as uh, expansive as Umbrella Academies, but they have a good few songs in there. They got some Billie Eilish, they got some Rosalia, they got some Frank Ocean in there. 
So yeah, and until now, I am still waiting for season two's announcement. <laughs> something to look forward to, man. Something to look forward to. And don't yeah. get thrown off by you know warrior non-religious themes. You know they respectfully uh, 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 portray the whole the whole religious theme and everything in the whole series. So yeah, nothing to get offended about. So yeah. yeah. By the sound of it, I'm missing out completely. I have to get on board with this and real soon. I have to get on board with this show. It's cool, bro. Yeah. It's cool. You got zombies and everything in there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you sold it really well. <laughs> you had me at Warrior Nun. You had me at Warrior <laughs> Nun, bro. Warrior freaking Nun, man. Heck yeah. And also, listeners, uh, another that's another recommendation that you guys should check out. Warrior Nun. It's a good, it's a good show. It's a good show. Another good Netflix adaptation. So yeah, uh, bro, you. What's your next one? All right, my final one I comes to us from the fictive band. Yeah, they're not even a real band. <laughs> they only exi- they only exist within the confines and the boundaries of the movie Jennifer's Body. Uh, and if you've watched, if you're a pious, devout fan of the movie, like I am, right? Because it's amassed such a cult following after its release. Because initially it was it was met tepidly by critics and casual moviegoers alike. But if you're anything like me and you've picked up on it, you know who I'm talking about. It's the AD, it's the Adam Brody rather. It's the Adam, I was about to say Adrian, completely Adrian different Brody. entity. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, completely different entity. Don't hold me to that, I'm sorry. It's the Adam Brody helmed band, Low Shoulder. Yeah, Low yes, Shoulder. Yes, with, <laughs> with, with their song, Through the Trees. I know they were pegged and portrayed and depicted as this very fiendish, diabolical, and heinous band, right? Because what they did in turn was sacrifice Jennifer Check to to the devil himself. But I kind of feel like it's it's okay to say that because it's it's almost been a decade since its release, so I kind of feel like we're out of the woods. We're in the clear. We could say things like that. We could spoil movies that have been out for like a decade, right? Yeah, bro. I'm pretty I mean, sure. I mean, like, man, that movie's like, wow. I saw that when I was a kid, bro. Man, what year did it come out? Wait, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna look it up. What year did it come out? 2009. But I could be refuted on that. Yeah, I 2009. Oh yeah, I'm on the oh. money then. Oh I man. I hit the nail on the head. I really Jeez. did hit the nail on the head. Huh? I was, yeah. I was eight. I was eight when the movie dropped. How old yeah. were you? Um, nine or ten. Uh, when did it wow. come out? Uh, oh, October, October twenty-eight, two thousand nine. So I was already ten. Yeah. Oh man, wow. this was way too mature for me. This was this movie was way too torrid and sultry <laughs> for eight-year-old Boaz, which is probably why I didn't enjoy it the first go, the first time around. Yeah. So Low Shoulder was pegged as this vile, uh, deplorable entity, this band, but um. The, the song, the song doesn't allude to that at all. It doesn't have any modicum of that at all. It's, it's super sterile, super pop, super vanilla uh, pop candy to me. <laughs> it's like very top 40 pop candy, cookie cutter, sterile uh, pablum is what it is to me. You know, it's quite vapid, it's quite derivative, but in the context, it, context is always important. And in the context of the movie, it, it works. It needed that. And it needed a heap of that, and Low Shoulder was 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 the answer to that. I love what they brought to the table, and I love that the dire- the director was able to recognize that the movie needed it because I I cannot imagine the movie without the the scene and the song. Yeah, the trees. Right. Yeah. And dude, I think it would be I would be uh, remiss, right, if I didn't mention that before Adam Brody was even in talks to play the character, before he was even in close negotiation with the studios and the casting directors you know who was considered before him <laughs> beforehand it was, it was actually between pete wentz the role is either gonna go to fall out boys pete wentz or brendan yuri of panic at the disco yo bro 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 yeah they were going toe-to-toe and head-to-head for the role i didn't know that at all oh wait so how did they how did those two not get the role it all boiled down to logistics at the end of the day. Logistically, it was going to be impossible for the two because at the time in 2009, 
in case you didn't know already, Xavier, and I'm pretty sure you do. Right? Yeah. Uh, as a massive, massive purveyor of the pop punk scene yourself. But for those who don't know, Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco were really at the top of their game. They were at their prime, at the top of the world, if you will. Yeah. During 2009. They were really fired up and hitting it in all cylinders. They were on top of the charts globally. We, we were talking like a planetary phenomenon was going on was brewing over the pop punk scene and it was helmed of course and at the forefront of that was Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco. Yeah man, I mean those were the years that those two bands were like really out there putting out good stuff, getting yeah. getting like big super big crowds and big venues. That would be yeah. cool, it would be cool and good for the uh, Jeffers Bodies marketing if one of those two were in the movie, you know. All right, so, so since it is music lowdown, let's give them the lowdown on the history a little bit, the lore, right? So what was coming out in 2009, Apropos, Fall Out Boy, and Panic at the Disco's discography? They landed Folly Adu. Folly Adu was coming out. They were rolling out Folly Adu, Fall Out Boy, in 2009. And Panic at the Disco, they were doing Vices and Virtues. Two of their biggest records to date, bro. They were coming out at that time. And at... With all that press and all those tours, I didn't think they could keep up with a motion picture shooting, mm -hmm. quite like Jennifer's Body, on the scale that it was. It was going to be too taxing on their time, on their schedule. And they, you know what? You can only be so load-bearing, I'm sure. Even as, as great as they are, you can only be so load-bearing before you ultimately just snap and you know get, get tired of it all. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. This is purely just... My, my take on it, this is a rather divisive one for sure. It's going to polarize and split in the middle a lot of the audiences. But I kind of feel like it would have been a, a, a vastly and a drastically better movie had it been had it got the discos, Brendan Yuri or Bob Boys, Keith Wentz on the driver's seat of that band Low Shoulder. I mean, if, they, if, they were in the move, if they were in the movie, man, um, they'll be immortalized in that movie. Yeah, they would have been cult heroes. Well, they already are, as it is. I kind of feel like they don't need that that visibility and that prestige anymore. But you know, any press helps. You want to yeah. head on over to your next pick? I'd love to hear your next pick. Oh, I'm I'm done already. Don't have any more. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you've reached the end of your trick bag. As far as this segment goes, I think we've uh, ridden it right down to the ground, <laughs> for better or for worse. But tell us if you'd love to hear more of this content, though, via the Music Lowdown's Gmail account, Gmail, uh, rather, sorry, Music Lowdown123 at gmail.com. You may reach us there. Tell us which uh, segments work, which segments you'd love to hear more of from us. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, we are done with our segment for the movie soundtracks. Um, now as a, as an opportunity to segue to our next segment, which is fact or fiction. Woo! We're back at it, baby. We're back, back at, at it. it again with another fact or fiction. So this time, each of us have a three, uh, three fact or fiction bands or artists that we're gonna quiz each other on. So yeah, are you ready, bro? Yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. Although, All right. That's that. That sentiment never holds true, and I'm up against you. <laughs> I never seem to be ready with you. I always lose to you. You're good. You're good at this game, man. Which, which in turn worked to my detriment over anything else. I really thought I was gonna slam you with this with this segment, but no, it backfired. It completely backfired. <laughs> you're so much better at it than I am. No, I mean, no, man. I mean, those those past two episodes. Yeah, I mean, we both did. We both did great on those past two episodes, bro. I mean, let's see this time around, right? We got fewer questions, so think the stakes are much higher this time. So yeah, let's get it. Uh, who's going up first? Me or you? I don't know, man. Ladies go first. So. Um. All right. So uh, it's you. You're the lady. Shots fired! Shots fired! Ooh, <laughs> trash talk. Right nah, out of man. the gate, man. I'm trying to nah. I'm trying to eat away. I'm trying to eat away at the little confidence that you have already. 
So yeah, what's it gonna be? Um, I all right. I'm a I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go first. You you quiz me first. But hey, man, I don't do trash talk. Just so you know, I don't do okay. trash talk. Okay. Okay. You won't stoop down to my level. I I respect all people, man. I respect all right, everyone. All right. Enough beating around the bush. Let's go to our first artist of the segment. The first artist comes to us in the form of Katrina Katana. Known as Colombia's best musical export, Katrina has been working in the music industry from the tender age of 10, starting as a backup dancer for Selena Perez, the seminal Selena Perez, the late and great Selena Perez. I'm not Fact sure. Or I'm fiction? Not sure. Fact or fiction? Fact or fiction? Fact or fiction? Fiction. I'm calling it fiction. Fiction. Wow, man. Okay. I'll give that I'll give that to you man. You you garnered the W in that bout. You got the better of me. You're right. <laughs> alright, alright. Thanks man. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Next one comes to us in the form of Korean rock band So So Neon, consisting of members Huang So Yoon, Wu Su, and Hyun Jin. Since their formation in 2016, the band has released their EP Summer Plumage 2017 and non adaptation. Fact so, or fiction, baby? It sounds it sounds factual. Uh, fact. I'm gonna go with fact on this one. Man, you're calling out my BS left and right. Good on you, man. You're right. Oh, legit? Again. Legit? Legit? It's fact. It's oh. a legit fan, <laughs> man. Let's head on over to my last artist, Kleba, a hodgepodge of the best hired guns from the 80s rock epic. The super team constitutes touring musicians that have paid that have played rather for Bon Jovi to Motley Crue. Fact or fiction? Fiction. I'm going with my gut. Fiction. It sounds. It sounds like it's fiction. You know what? Me winning this game is just about as likely as me being the Pope, which is never gonna happen. <laughs> and right, you are again on the money. You hit the nail <laughs> on the head, man. On the mark. You're the perfect marksman. Three out of three, baby. Good oh, job. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Uh, you know what? Historically, historically, you've been getting a lot of stellar runs at this game. When I take <laughs> a crack at it, and it's the very game that I've devised for Music Lowdown. I, I, this is my brainchild. I've made it completely on my own merit, on my own accord, but it seems to be backfiring. It doesn't seem to like me at all. Yeah, man. It seems to favor you more, man. Oh, what's with this partiality? I hope I get the W. I hope I pull out the W in this next one. Let's see how you fare on this one, all right? Uh, so here are the three I'm going to be asking you, all right? You ready, bro? The game's rigged. It's tendentious. <laughs> uh, game's rigged. Oh, man. Sure, man. Let's do it. Let's get all this right. over with. Let's get, I'm going to lose get. it anyways. Okay, so I got some interesting ones for you to answer, all right? So fact or fiction? First one I got here is of a band called Hanatarash, right? Hanatarash means snot nose, okay? So this is a Japanese noise band, all right, that has been around since the 80s. So they're best known as being one of Japan's very dangerous bands due to their live shows, live shows being so brutal and violent. One of their standout performances, all right? was when the band drove a bulldozer through the venue and destroying a portion of the place itself. Fact or fiction? Whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so that would serve to say that they're contemporaries of the band X Japan. Because X Japan was blowing up at the same time. I guess so. Okay, that would serve to say that. And I just, you know what? I'm a very pragmatic guy. And I've read up on X-Japan, not in this particular band, the band in question, but I'd imagine that they'd somehow be, I don't know, man, even at a, even at a, what do you call this? Even at a, on a periphery level, they would have been mentioned somehow, or they would have been earmarked in some of the puff pieces or some of the media pieces that I've read up on X-Japan. So, in that regard, they're at least tangentially related. And I've, rock, I've read up a lot on X-Japan. I'm a big fan. Oh, man. You're pressing me up against a brick wall here. I don't even know. <laughs> fact or fiction? Ah, I'm just gonna fact go. I'm just... Uh, fact, fact, fact. Let's go with fact. You are right. That is a Yo! fact. Yo! 
<laughs> Yo. Yeah, bro. No way. I am legit. That is legit, bro. Um, how I came across this band was I was going on YouTube and on my recommendations. It's, it's there's a like a title there. It's called um, Japan's most dangerous band or the, or the most dangerous band. And then the thumbnail was was a dude like jumping off stage. And that's how I discovered this band, Natarash. You know, it's experimental, purely experimental. It's not for everybody. And I've seen uh, that their the pictures from their live shows, they're very, very, very extreme, bro. Like, um, there are articles saying that in this venue, they, um, I'm sorry if this is gonna be graphic, but they um, dissected a cat. Um, yeah, legit, they dissected a cat. Um, there was one we're in, they were just um, throwing around furniture on stage and everything. And yeah, this is uh, one of their standout moments. Is when yes, they got a bulldozer, they drove it through the venue, wrecking it in the process, and that's what they call uh, music, quote unquote music for them. And it came to the point where in um, there were venues that were turning them down. They had to sign waivers saying that whatever <laughs> injury or harm or damage that comes to them is part of the performance and everything. So yeah. I imagine just because of the sheer damage that they would incur and yeah. inflict. I suggest and willingly. You check out the pictures. Yeah. I don't wanna. <laughs> I, d- I would never espouse nor condone such behavior, even from a rock band. Very extreme. So, yeah, uh, next one. Next one. Okay. So, the next one is an artist called The Caretaker. All right. So, this guy, The Caretaker, is an English electronic musician. So he makes music that revolves around, oh sorry, his music style revolves around manipulating uh, sound samples or music samples. And he composes songs in a way that it explores uh, the theme of deterioration. And he's been around since like the 80s or 90s. And he's gained recent traction with his album Everywhere at the End of Time. Because that album is more than six hours long. Fact or fiction? He sounds a little too ambitious to me. A little too ambitious to even be real. I'm severely questioning the verisimilitude of that, the veracity of that. I don't think I don't think he's an actual dude, but I'm thinking, bro. I'm thinking. I'm don't, doing a thorough think. Don't think, bro. Just go with your gut and say fact or fiction. <laughs> it's the beard, man. It's afraid of your beard. It must be the beard. It's a fear tactic of yours. And it's working in spades. Yeah, man. It's working in spades. It's worked like a charm for you. I hate it. I hate it. All right. Here goes. Fiction. Fiction, man. I'm walking it in. Fiction. Uh, fiction. So you're saying fiction, all right? You're saying fiction? Okay. This guy is real. Oh, holy cow. Yeah. This guy made an album that's six hours long, bro. <laughs> six hours? Yeah, but for real. Yeah. Uh, I thought notes on a conditional form was loaded. I thought that was bloated. <laughs> bro, this thing. Get a load this of this guy. It takes a lifetime to complete, man. Bro, this shit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wait for for some info and context. So essentially, uh, this guy just got uh viral because there his album everywhere at the end of time. Um, how to say this? I don't know how to say this, but like it's very sad and very depressing to listen to because it's just ambient sounds that you hear. But um, while you're listening to it, you get like. You know, a rush of anxiety and discomfort and everything. And even me, while I was uh, listening to it, I was really uneasy listening to the whole thing. And there are videos of pe- or videos and live streams of people reacting to this. You know, they break down towards the end of the album. I wouldn't recommend anyone to listen to it. It's um ah, it's an acquired yeah. taste type of thing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so essentially, it's just a lower, it's a glorified, gentrified, and a lionized version of chill beats to study to. No, I'm just kidding. Next one. Third. My third and final one, okay? So, this one is a rapper, alright? This rapper is called 645AR. Gang, gang, gang. This guy is an up-and-coming rapper. 
and he is best known for his high pitched squeaky rap voice. Oh man. He's attracted a lot of internet sensation and internet fame due to his songs being used in TikToks, memes, and other edits. He's essentially when you look at this guy, he's a, a hood straight up hood gangster. But once he starts rapping, oh it's like you got Playboy Cardi sniffing helium, bro. So is this guy <laughs> fact or fiction? Unluckily for you, I saw his verified video. Oh no, no! no. <laughs> so no, I, know no. I called you out. I called you out on that one. Oh no! He's the real deal. He's the real deal. <laughs> and you don't think I keep abreast of the latest rap news? Oh man, you're selling me short here, man. Yeah, I know. I know me some rap. Bro, his very he, he did a breakdown. He did a breakdown on for the trap. Yeah, <laughs> that's not for the trap. <laughs> That was, that was a funny video, bro. It's like, yo, I was in the hood, you know what I'm saying? And then when you cut to him, like, doing the chorus, <laughs> oh no, oh no. It's so unbecoming and incongruous of what you would expect from the hood, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it just leaps and bounds away to talking, like, super unbecoming. Oh man, and then, like, the comments on that video, it's like, you know, like, we got you got to 2016. You have mumble rap, and you have to you go out to 2020. You have mosquito rap or fly rap. Mosquito rap. Like <laughs> all from a guy, all from a guy that supposedly came from the hood, one of the hardest places to grow up in. Bro, I don't know what was, I don't I like even in the video. Like, I don't know if this guy is like joking or like is he serious? He's the walking idiomatic representation. He's the anthropomorphic version of never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You never know. He's like that idiom with legs. <laughs> honestly. Sooner or later, he's gonna have a collab with Playboy Cardi. That's gonna be like the, the ultimate mumble rap song. I don't no, think that's gonna work. No, I'm waiting for a mumble rap album between with a, with these two, bro. No, he, ha- he has to collaborate with someone with a with a starkly deeper voice, with a radically deeper voice from him. I mean, all the mumble rappers, they all have like this, this like high, they have the trend of having like this like higher pitch voice. Like For sure, man. But yeah. Anyway, you got you got the win on this one. You got 6, 4, 5 AR on this nah, one. Nah, numerically, you still got the W. You nah, got man. Slate. You yeah, did, you you did good really as well, you did good. At least, bro, you, you pulled out one under from me, bro. You, you, you knew about the guy already, so yeah. No, if anything, you, you swept the rug from underneath me. I didn't expect you'd get a clean slate today. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Expect the unexpected from Xavier. <laughs> yeah, man, so that was this that was this episode's segment, Fact or Fiction. Good job, bro, good job. Yeah, we're, we're, closing, we're closing that one. We're putting the lid on that one again, using it for the next episode, of course, since that seems to be our, our best seller. It's selling like pancakes, man. Yeah, our, the our staple. So yeah, um, we're done with Factor Fiction. I guess we've had our stretch ready doing our two segments of the music sound. Um, sorry, movie soundtracks and Factor Fiction. So um, we have we've had our good time on this show with our segment special segment for the literacy month. And now we gotta close off this episode with our closing performance, our closing song. Boaz, introduce the song for the viewers. What is this song? All right, so we're rounding out and capping off this episode on a high with this next song from the Umbrella Academy. Woo! Oh yes, we're doing it. The standout from season one, the stellar song, I Think We're Alone Now. Yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, bro. Of course. Okay, guys, we're going to end on a high note. We're going to be doing our song, and we'll be back. We'll be back in a three, two, one. That's what they say when we're together Watch as you play They don't understand So we're just running as fast as we can Holding on to one another's hand I'm trying to run away into the 
up guys i hope you guys love that performance that we had our closing song i think we're alone now by tiffany what do you think bro what do you think it's one of those songs that didn't immediately get the traction that it should have you know yeah. but um like most songs like most good songs they go relatively under the radar under people's noses and then they start to ascend it like several decades, in this case, several decades after, right? Since it did pick up when the Umbrella Academy was released. And I have to say, man, the music scorers and the music producers of that show have impeccable taste. Yes, impeccable yes, yes. taste. Couldn't have chosen a better song for that dance scene. That was uh, the song that defined the series, man. It's yeah, it's pretty, much, it's pretty much synonymous to the series at this point. So anyway, uh, this was our third episode of the Music Lowdown. This was our first episode for September. This is our episode for the Literacy Month theme. So guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. Do uh, you have anything else to say, boys? Nothing other than I'm looking forward to season... No, <laughs> season. season. Episode season. four. I'm getting way too ahead of myself. Assuming we get renewed. Okay, I'm looking forward to a second season, but... As it stands now, the most imminent thing we could look forward to is the fourth episode. Yes, so let's yes. do that. Let's look forward to the fourth episode. It's going to be good. Yes, yes. All right. So thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. This is your boy, Savior, signing out. This is Boaz from 99.5 Play FM signing off. We've got the best tunes on Dispatch, iAcademy's first and only music-centric podcast. Original renditions of your favorite songs, reviews, and then some. All under one roof. You're tuned in to the Music Lowdown with Xavier and Boaz, powered by iAcademy. <laughs>